Hey, how's it going everybody? The XL announcer and we're back with another video. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to play Ghost Watchers. Now, this is a game that I got because I was kind of a little bit bored with Phasmophobia. I've got almost 760 hours in that game and uh, I just hit level 5000 and I wanted something new. So a couple friends recommended me Ghost Watchers and when I uh, got the Ghost Watchers, it really wasn't known how to actually play the game. What I mean by that, there is there's this how to play, but it really doesn't give you a good explanation of what to do. So in this video, I'm going to teach you guys how to play the game and different aspects to be able to help you along in your journey. So the first bit that I want to go over is going to be the servers. Now, up in the top right, you'll see this uh, United States dash one and then your ping. If you click on this, there's going to be different servers you can go to. Now, I definitely recommend if you're having problems joining a friend in the game, make sure you're on the right server because I have that issue. Next, you're going to see your money. This is the money that you get for completing a, a game. From there, you're going to have your character and then kind of, I guess you can call it the microtransactions that you can use your money to buy. If you go into shop, you're going to see skins and these are just different skins that are available to you. You get four free skins and then you have to purchase the other two. Now, when I say purchase, I don't mean for real life money. Your money that you get in the game, you can actually spend on purchasing either of these skins. Next, you're going to have your drones. So the $5,000 drone gives you a drone light with a, a drone with a constant light. The $6,000 drone will give you drone with a constant light and a UV light. And then the more expensive one, which I recommend going straight for, don't buy any of the other ones. It's just a waste of money, in my opinion. This is going to be $12,000, and it's a drone with a constant ray of light, UV, and plus one to inventory slot. That is so nice. So you get four items instead of three. From there, you get your bracers. Now, a bracer eliminates the drag. So what that means is when you're inside the building, and I'm sure that at some point um, I will take this off so you'll be able to see, but it'll be simple bracer. It's a 50% drag protection. And then your larger one, which I think is 9,000, I can't really remember, is improved for 100% drag protection. I recommend going for this uh, before your drone probably. That way, getting dragged off if you don't have a light or anything, it's kind of hard to figure your way back if you don't know the maps, but uh, it's 100% drag protection. You can't be dragged in the game. From there, you have your menus. Obviously, the exit credits and settings is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, training and single player connect to game and new game. So if you're trying to start up a game and you want people to come in, you can hit new game. Now, new game is we're going to set it to private so people don't come in for a second. Your new game means that you are now visible to everyone that wants to play the game. You have your lobby code here that you can see and you can copy to your clipboard to send to your friend if you want to play privately. And then you have your connected who's connecting. There is no voice chat in the lobby. You only have your text text chat here. You have your modifier description. So if I put collect ectoplasm this will tell you what it says it says players will have to collect three parts of the ghost ectoplasm to get the ghost of catcher two parts are hidden in the level the last one falls from the ghost when it is scared away ectoplasm of different types of ghosts become visible with the help of different tools uv flashlight holy fire or camera refer refer to the tablet for a hint now we'll go over the tablet here in a, in a little bit when we're in the game sanity players are given a new characteristic sanity you can lose your sanity at ghostly events and go mad. If your mental health has dropped to zero, then the ghost protection may not work and you may die. Maintain sanity at the right level with the help of special pills. And then you have the pentagram. Modifier description is players have to collect various items at the location for the pentagram ritual. Before the capture, it is necessary to perform a ritual. You must throw a ritual dagger into the pentagram to activate the ritual and summon the ghost. Manage to insert the necessary items into every corner, thereby preventing the ghost from getting out. Beware of the circle of the ghost attack so as not to be attacked. And we'll go into that one again in the next part. From there, you have your difficulty settings. You have normal, hard, and insane difficulty. I recommend everybody start on normal, learn the game before you decide to try to go up in, in difficulties, as well as the modifiers actually increase the difficulty itself. Down in the bottom right corner, right here, you'll see it says uh, how much money you'll get for completing that and how much experience you get as well. From there, you have your maps that you could choose. You have the abandoned house, the city, school, police station, church, and mountain lodge, as well as East European house, or you can go random. The training base is just to get kind of a sense of what everything is and how to use it. 
but you'll have to exit out. You won't be able to catch any ghosts and it's just basically for training. From there, you have connect to game. Connect to game shows you any servers that are available in that server code. Now, I don't like the fact that you can't actually change your server in here. You do have to back out, go to server, switch it, and then go back to connect to game. So again, if you can't find your friend's game, it's probably because you guys are not in the same server. From there, you have your single player. This makes it so you don't have to worry about anyone coming in and it's a little bit easier. I'm not sure if it actually sets the game out a little bit easier being single player and I have not been able to get an answer from them. So if you know and you've talked to the devs at all and you know if uh, single player actually reduces the difficulty a little bit, let me know in the comment section below. Okay, so we're gonna do a new game and we're gonna do a solo. Now the things that I recommend to do is if you're first starting off, don't do ectoplasm and don't do sanity. They're going to make things exponentially harder for you and it's going to be it's going to be really frustrating. So I definitely recommend just doing pentagram. Pentagram super easy. Uh, we'll go over that when we get in the game and we get to that point. So we're going to start with the abandoned house. The abandoned house is really simple as well. It's a good house to start with and I definitely recommend going with the abandoned house. So let's get into this. All right. So right in the game, you can see here that uh, you can see the light turning back and forth. That's going to be my drone right up there. So wherever you look, the drone's going to look as well. Now, this is going to look really intimidating to you, but as soon as you understand it, it's going to be super easy. So first off on the shelf, you have all of your items. You're going to have your particle counter, your thermometer, your EMF sensor, your spirit box or radio. You're going to have a lighter, multiple flashlights, UV light, a strong and small flashlight. This is going to be your ritual dagger. These are your ghost prevention, I guess you could say, that you're going to need to hold when the ghost attacks you. And we'll go over those in a minute. Your Ouija board, your voodoo doll, and ghost writing book. These are going to be your vers versivirus flask, your golden bomb, silver bomb, a photo camera, video camera, your magic book, salt, holy salt, and fire salt. On the left side of the truck, you're going to see a shop. This is where you can buy any extra items you may need if you accidentally throw a silver bomb or a golden bomb and you need another one, you could buy it here. The number down in the left corner is gonna be how much money that it costs and how many times you could buy it during this playthrough. So for example, if I want another golden bomb, I could buy this and you can see it goes down to nine. Yeet. All right, on the right side of the truck, we're gonna have the drive away button. This is if uh, you cannot figure out what it is because at the end, when you do the pentagram, it'll just automatically end the game. But if for some reason you can't figure it out and you just need to go, you can hit the drive away button and you're gone. Now you're gonna be hearing little things in the background like the squeakings and glass breaking. Don't worry, it's just ambient sound. There's really nothing going on. This is your ghost catcher. This is what you're gonna use to catch the ghost. This you don't need until the pentagram is done, but you're gonna wanna bring it in while you're doing the pentagram. So we'll just drop this right here and leave it. This is your plasma absorber. Now, if you're not doing plasma, you really don't need to do anything with this. So this can just stay right in the corner. Stay right there. This is your withering light. It's a protection device that you could bring along with you in the case of an, a ghost attack. Now, only some ghosts will actually be able to be prevented from attacking with this light. Some ghosts will be irritated by it and some ghosts, it won't matter at all. I'll show that later in the video if the occasion arises. For now, we're gonna leave it right there. These are your screens. So if you have any cameras up, if I take this camera, we can turn this on and now you can see if somebody's inside looking around, you can see where they're at. I recommend leaving these off as it's putting four more screens and it's trying to connect to it. So sometimes it gets a little laggy. All right, so what I recommend you do when you first get into the game is start grabbing everything you possibly can from the radio over and the camera over and bringing it inside just throwing it down right at the beginning of the house now you heard that sound that sound will always come up when you first open the door now the reason i say come in and oh okay down in the bottom left perfect if i didn't have the bracelet on i would have been pulled away so I was protected in being pulled away. Now, the reason I say open the door and throw everything inside is because there's no ghost room. It's not like phasmophobia where you have to find the ghost room. The ghost wanders the entire house. So what you want to do is put it down in the living room. And this way, if anything happens in this area, you'll be able to get a reading on it like that. Perfect. We have ghost writing. 
Now this is the first thing I can teach you. There's going to be multiple different, if you hit tab, I'm sorry, if you hit tab, it'll bring up your ghostwriting book. I think it just wrote in the Ouija board too. It did. Look at that. So much learning. We're getting so lucky here. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, left click on any of these items don't work. Right click is how you put it down. E is how you open the door, obviously. Now inside your tab, it's your tablet. You'll see here you got thermometer, EMF sensor, footprint, notebook, particle counter, Ouija board, voodoo doll, and radio. Set those backwards. But now we can see here the Ouija board is just slowly going left to the right to left to right. So we're going to go to the Ouija board and we're going to do moves from side to side. That gives us the ghost sage is older or it's in the middle. Now we see scribbles for the notebook. So we're going to go to notebook and we're going to do doodles. That gives us the child, the darkness, or the puppet for a ghost type. If you're below level 10, you're only going to get these top ghosts. If you're above level 10, below level 20, you're only going to get these ghosts for level 1 to 10, 1 to 9, and 10 to 19. Above level 20, you're going to get the Baba Duke and the Krampus. Now, I don't know if you heard the glass break. The glass break is nothing. It's just a ambient sound. All right. You see that the voodoo doll climbed up. And now we're getting red 2. If we get red 2, we're going to have red 3. Anything red 1 up, we're going to have red 3. Now, a lot of things we're getting right away, which is crazy because I never get it this fast. Sometimes it'll take a little bit longer for evidence to start appearing. Now, this is the particle counter. You, ha you can walk around with this to try to find out where the ghost kind of area is. And... This will start going up from 0% to 100%. When it hits 100%, it's going to give you a number. This one is 500 to 1,000. So we're going to come in here and we're going to find our particle counter and we're going to put in 500 to 1,000. So now this is an older ghost. You can click on older and now you know the age. Next, the voodoo doll is raising up and then falling down. There's going to be three interactions that can happen. Well, two interactions and a not interaction. It can either not play with the voodoo doll at all it can raise it up and drop it, or it can yeet it across the room. So we go to the voodoo doll, and we go, th uh, doo -doo, nope, not that one, raises doll. So it's a calm ghost, which is good. We have a calm ghost. Perfect. The next things we need to do is we need to go to EMF sensor because we know we had red three. So we're looking at the puppet or the darkness. Next thing we should do is look for the thermometer and try to see if there's footprints. Now this is where it gets a little tricky because if you don't have the drone, you have to come in and use the UV light. Oh, we need the spirit box in there too. My apologies. So something you can do with the voodoo doll, oh, uh, correction, the radio is you can ask it questions. V is going to be how to ask it questions, but while you're in single player, you actually don't have to hit V at all. So as I've asked it multiple questions and it's not speaking yet, that's okay. It may not speak right away. We're going to start walking around and looking for any type of ghost temperatures as well as blood stains or anything like that. We're going to be able to see it on the... Okay, perfect. Do you see how it's 50? Now only... If you see anything going higher, uh, what we're going to do is always come out of the house when you're putting in evidence in your journal. There are the thermometer you have minus 20 to minus 10, minus 5 to minus, or plus 5, and then plus 45 to plus 55. So we know it's the puppet. And you heard something else happen over here, like a break. There's nothing really there. It's just an ambient sound. So we're going to come in and we're going to start looking around. We're going to take not only the video camera, and I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. We're going to start looking around for any blood stains or footprints now there's unlimited running you don't have to worry about okay now it's starting to hunt what you want to do is find the closest exit to leave if you're outside the house the ghost cannot get you wait a couple seconds after the hunt you can go back in if you're inside the house while it's hunting and you can't get out um, it can find you and if you don't have a way to protect yourself you will die now on the ground here, you're going to be able to see blood stain. So that's a blood stain and that's a blood stain. If I drop my flashlight, we're actually going to turn it off, drop it. You'll see that my drone will actually light it up. So now since we know we have blood stains, we're going to go around and start opening up as many doors as we possibly can. I like to have this door open on the outside so I don't run into it.
Okay. So that'll be good enough. I only open the doors up because it makes it a lot easier to run around the house. You could do that right at the beginning if you would like. So we're going to go in and the footprints, let's see, where is it? Uh, footprints. It's going to be blood stains. We know it's the puppet already, but it's good evidence to have. So when you have all your evidence here and there's no more that you could pick, let's just say we didn't know about blood stains. We already have the evidence. We don't really need to get footprints if we don't need to. If we have all the evidence, that's all you need to do. So this is a materializer. This is right next to the truck. This is how you're gonna materialize a ghost. You're gonna upload your data and you're gonna hit confirm. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna make the ghost appear. We're gonna be able to see the ghost uh, from time to time and where it's at. And it's gonna try to pop up and scare you more. Now, before you go back in, when you know the ghost, you're gonna wanna come over and look at weakening the ghost. Your first weakening is gonna be materialize the ghost, which we just did. But you're also gonna wanna see protects. So what protects from the ghost is going to be that plasma absorber and a fire stick. And your fire sticks or your holy fire, uh, your torch is gonna be on the right. You also have your salt, your holy salt, golden bomb silver bomb and the red uh, flask of ashes now if you were doing ectoplasm you can see here that it's the puppet the ghost age is older ghost mood is calm ectoplasm reacts to this tool and that's the video camera but since we're not doing ectoplasm we don't need to worry about that from this point on when you figure out what the ghost is you could leave but you're not going to get any money since we have the pentagram what we need to do is start weakening the ghost so weakening the ghost, our next bet is flask with the ashes. So we're gonna take that, and it looks like the next one's gonna be silver bomb. So something you can do is, so in order to start weakening the ghost, so flask with the versa virus and the silver bomb, we're gonna need the ghost to attack us, and then what we'll do is we'll use it when it when it grabs us, and I'll show you what that looks like. Now if we do this right, we can actually get both of these uh, in order. Now, left click is how you're going to be able to throw these. Here it comes. It's coming downstairs. Nope, there it is. Left, left. So see, we were able to hit it twice because it does this little, like, spot where it stops for a second and kind of falls down, and you're able to use two of them if you have two throwables. The next is summon the spirit using the cursed mirror. Okay. So we're going to pick up our holy fire to take with us, and we're going to take the video camera. Now, cursed objects will show up on the video camera as this kind of green glowing fog around each item. These items you're gonna take, bring it over to the pentagram room, and then we're just gonna throw them down right here. We're gonna look for the next one. There's none in here. We got more blood stains in here. You always wanna make sure that your you remember where the exits are oh perfect so we can hear oh let's go out for a second because it's hunting so again if you're outside it cannot hurt you wait a couple seconds we're good to go so you heard kind of like the crying or the well sound that's going to be the radio so you can go in here since we don't really need to do this you know it, it's not necessary but we could put crying in our book um, that can be one of the evidences to help figure out what type of ghost it is. Also, if you are using the infrared light and you do have the drone, you can hit F to turn that uh, light off. So we're going to head upstairs now. We're going to look around. I don't see any cursed objects around here. Up oh, there's a cursed object there. Okay, we're not going to be able to make it outside. So we're going to have to use our, ooh, we made it outside. Ooh, we made it outside. That's awesome. Okay. We got really lucky there. Even though we do still have our protection with us, um, it's still, we don't want to have to buy it over and over and over. It wastes a lot of money. What am I going outside for? All right, we're going to head back upstairs and we're going to look in these rooms for any more cursed objects. Now you're going to have five cursed objects. You could have a toy. Uh, let's throw this down here. Oh, it turned on the light for us. Thank you. Now, as you go up in difficulty, it'll actually lock the door when it starts hunting and you can't get out, which you're going to need to have a protection device with you. 
Okay, so that's five items. You have the dream catcher, the watch, the rose, the mask, and the skull. That's all five items that you're going to need to start the ritual. So since we have those, uh, we can go back, grab the camera, and now we need to find the cursed mirror. And there it is. Now, we need to summon the ghost. So I always recommend having the protection on you when you summon the ghost because that's one of the things we need. So we're going to walk inside with it. Oops. Not hit the wrong button. And if we just look around, we should see the ghost. See it? There it is right there. All right. We summon the ghost. So we come back over to weakening the ghost. We did the ashes. We did the silver bomb. We just summoned the spirit using the cursed mirror. Now we need to hit it with holy fire and a golden bomb. And actually, holy fire we have in our hand now, and we're going to grab a golden bomb. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to buy another one of these. Hey, there was a ghost right there. Hey, there's a ghost right there. Hello, buddy. I like to have these doors on the open side as well. And now we just kind of wait around and see if we can get the ghost to hunt. I like to walk up and down the stairs a bunch because it tends to... I don't know. I find it, uh, it pisses off the ghost and it'll cause it to hunt faster. So now we're going to wait. Now there could be a jump scare where it could, uh, not run at you and it could just pop up right at you. Just like that. Oh, and I threw the wrong button. Ah, dang. I always hit the wrong button sometimes. Uh, so I hit right click instead of left click. So we have to come back over and buy another, uh, golden bomb. Okay. So there's a good example as well. You don't actually have to wait for it to hunt you. It's a lot easier that way because sometimes it doesn't show up for a while. But if you do show up, if it does show up and you need something like Holy Fire or Golden Bomb and like that there, you could throw it at it. And uh, if it hits it, it'll actually weaken the ghost as well. So now we did, we did the Ashes, the Silver Bomb, the Mirror, Holy Fire, Golden Bomb. Um, and now we could do the Pentagram Ritual. But before we do the pentagram ritual, what we want to do is our secondaries. So we come back to the truck. We see open all doors, take a picture of the ghost footprint, uh, weaken the ghost with the plasma absorber. All right, so let's weaken the ghost. Let's take the camera in. So since weakening the ghost is with the plasma absorber, wait, did we grab the plasma absorber? Yes, we did. Uh, what we're going to do is go around and open all the doors. And when it starts hunting, we're just going to throw it down and it should protect us from... The ghost. Okay, perfect. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take the plasma absorber and we're just going to toss it down right here. And see, bam, it protected us. Hi, buddy. Door is open. That door is open. Perfect. All right, that's one objective done. We heard the little ding. We come in here to the footprints. Take a photo. Oh, not that button. Okay. So we heard the little ding again and all of our secondaries are done. Perfect. I do want to show you that on this, you see that it has two now instead of three. It only has three uses. And I think I should have said this at the beginning as well. And maybe I'll clip this in somewhere in between. Something with the protection here is you'll see that some of these items have three strings wrapped around them. That means they have three uses each. It means you can hold it in your hand when the ghost hunts you and attacks you, it'll use one of those uses. But that's only if it protects from the ghost. As you can see here, we have the plasma absorber and the holy fire, and they don't, they only have, the holy fire only has one use, where the plasma absorber has three uses. But you have to have the plasma absorber by you and set it down, and the ghost will come and it'll protect you from a ghost attack. All right, now since we have all the secondaries done and we've weakened the ghost all the way down to the pentagram ritual, we know what ghost it is. We've done everything. What we're going to do is we're going to come over. We're going to grab the ghost catcher and we're going to grab the ritual dagger. Now, since we've been out of the house a little bit, it's probably going to start hunting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go upstairs and downstairs and I'm going to wait for it to hunt one time. You actually don't have to do this. We could just run right in there and use the dagger but i kind of want to explain it a little bit so i want it to kind of have a little bit of a leeway to, to hunt so we come in we can see here that we have all the items stacking up here and we have the ritual here i always recommend 
We're going to put this down. Always recommend to have something to protect yourself uh, because sometimes there's going to be these circles that pull up. And if you get inside the circle or if you accidentally come inside this circle here, the ghost will uh, grab you and kill you if you don't have a way to protect yourself. So we're going to left click and we're going to start the ritual. We're going to throw the dagger right in the middle and now we can see there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start picking up some of these items and we're going to see around the circle where to put these items. So we have skull. I don't have the skull with me so we're going to have to do that one in a second. It's okay if you don't get it right away. You have another chance. You see that circle? If we go inside that circle we could die. Alright, rose. So I have the rose. We're going to come up and put the rose down. I'm going to pull up another item with me. We're going to close that door. Okay. Nope. We're going to grab that. Bring it around. I like to stay back because it could, uh, that attack circle could come out here. All right. Dream catcher. Put the dream catcher down. One over there and one over there. So we're going to come around here. Now the only thing we have left is going to be the mask. So I'm going to stay back here, wait for the mask. Put the mask down. Now we can uh, throw this at the ghost and capture it. And we captured the ghost. And that's... That's how we do a regular map on ghost watchers all right everyone that's how you play ghost watchers i hope you guys enjoyed and learned something if you did go ahead and hit that like button for me and subscribe to the channel it really helps me out if there's any other games that you would like to learn and you would like me to teach you please go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section below and i'll see what i can do about getting a video out for you but in the meantime i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you guys in the next one